What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Kick-Ass Marketing, giving your small business marketing a fighting chance. I'm Robert Vico, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, business partner, wife, baby mama, she's all that, and a bag of chips, Christy Arce. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. And I'm very excited to bring these tips to you because if you're watching this, you're ready for change. You're ready to take your business to the next level. You're ready to accomplish your goals. You are ready. And we are here to make that happen. So today, in this episode, we're going to talk about my friend Jay. And my friend Jay really shocked the shit out of me the other day when I talked to him. I said, Jay, what's going on, buddy? How's the job hunting going? See, Jay got laid off a few months ago. And for the last three or four months, every time I talked to Jay, he still hasn't found a job. I said, Jay, how's the job hunting going? Here's where Jay freaked me out. Jay says, it's not going good, Rob. I'm hoping to extend my unemployment benefits. So sad. So sad, right? My father was turning in his grave when he would, if he were to hear that, right? This is a guy who came from Cuba with nothing, worked his ass off to build a life for himself, to build a life for my sister and myself. Um, and he did it on his own with pure determination and pure work ethic. My father lost multiple jobs. He was not an easy person to deal with. He was very quick to tell an employee, hey, F yourself, I'm out of here. Come home and tell my mom, hey, I quit my job. I don't like the way they talk to me. But he never went and stood on that unemployment line. He would do odd jobs. He would go out there every single day. He would do whatever he had to do, but his pride did not let him go and stand on that unemployment line. And that's a very similar situation with my family. My grandparents came from Cuba. They didn't speak the language. They didn't have the know-how of the American system. So what did they do? They were forced into entrepreneurship. They were forced to start their own businesses. But like Rob's dad, they were here to fight. They were here to work hard, to earn whatever money they could to support their family. That's right. Um, my father wasn't an entrepreneur, but the work ethic that I learned from him instilled that work ethic in me as an entrepreneur and me as a business owner. And one of the reasons that I'm an entrepreneur nowadays, and I've always owned my own business since the time I was about 20 years old, I've been on my own, I've never really collected a paycheck from a corporation, was because of the struggles that my father went through, job after job, quitting jobs, getting fired from jobs. I thought to myself, I'm never going to be in this predicament. It was gut-wrenching to our family when my father would come home that Friday and say, hey, I lost my job. We knew we were going we were gonna go through some tough times. So I never wanted to experience that. And I knew that for me, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, providing for my own financial freedom, giving myself independence, building something for myself, not going to work every day and building something for somebody else, not going to work every day and making somebody else rich. Why would you work as hard as you work for someone else? I mean, for us, it's, it's clear. You want to work hard, but you want to do it for yourself so you can reap the good. Yeah. So one of the things that I love the most about entrepreneurship is the marketing side of things. So I got with Jay. And I gave Jay a couple of marketing principles that can be um, easily used to get attention for his resume and to get him a job interview. Um, and that kind of led me into thinking a little bit more about marketing. And so I've come up with seven different little tips, strategies, ideas, you know, some kick-ass marketing that you can do to give your business a fighting chance. So the first one that I got for today is endorsed mailings or joint venture partnerships, right? One of the quickest ways to increase your customer base is to access the customer base of a non-competing business within, within your local market. So, for example, we did quite a, quite, a, quite a bit ago, we did a uh, joint venture mailing, an endorsed mailing letter with a company called Rainbow Printing. And we wrote the sales letter. Uh, Rainbow Printing sent out this letter to all of their customers, letting them know, hey, this is Capture Glory. This is the company we get all our promotional items from. I've worked out a great deal with them to give you my customers at Rainbow Printing this great deal on promotional items. And then we did the same thing in return. We sent a letter to all of our customers, letting them know that we do all of our printing, all of our flyers, all of our marketing collateral with Rainbow Printing. And we secured a great offer, a great discount for all of our Capture Glory clients who would wish to start working with Rainbow Printing. So that's an easy joint venture mailing. If you're in... Uh, the spa business, you might want to do a joint venture with a nail salon or a hair salon. If you're in uh, the real estate business, you might want to do a joint venture with a uh, Molly Maid type of company that can come in and do cleaning. If you're a, a restaurant business, you might want to do uh, a co-venture with hotels, local hotels in your area near your restaurant. You can talk to co the concierge and have them 
offer uh, or suggest your restaurant. So all those are great ways to create joint ventures or endorsed mailings. So go out there, find someone that you can partner with in a non-competing client, a non in a non-competing market, and go out there, give them a phone call, and create a joint venture mailing. Well, that leads us to our second tip, and that is change your target. It may seem easy, it may seem like a no-brainer, but a lot of times we keep going to the same clients that we feel comfortable with, the same clients that have given us money before. Um, I know as a salesperson, a lot of times when I get a new list, I cringe. It's like the worst thing in the world because I feel much more comfortable going after my clients that know me, that love me, that I've done business with, but it's something that you must do. You have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. You have to say, okay, if this is the type of customers that I'm contacting and they're not giving me any business now, maybe there's something going on in their industry, maybe it's not the season for them, so you have to redirect your target. You have to go after the new clients that, you may, that may end up giving you that lost revenue that can compensate wherever you're, you're lacking. Right. But, but don't just focus on, on new clients and new markets. A lot of us small business owners, we tend to put a lot of our effort, resources, and dollars into chasing new clients, and we tend to ignore our existing clients. That happened. I know why he's saying that. He's saying that, not directly at me, right? But he's saying that because that actually happened to me personally. So we're speaking here from experience. So he's not just saying this for no reason. And so it's not just your, your existing clients that you ignore. But we also tend to ignore our inactive clients. There's always those clients that you think to yourself, man, I haven't heard from these people in a while, or hey, these people haven't placed an order in, in, in a while. They used to order every six months, it's been a year. Well, it's a good time to make yourself a list of those dead clients, of those inactive clients, and make them an offer. Reactivate them, bring them back in the door. That's gonna bring you in revenue, which is a lot cheaper and a lot easier to get than going on and chasing new clients. And right? studies show that it's so much easier to get your inactive clients to order from you again than it is to get a new client. So folks, again, I'm sure <clears throat> he's not saying that uh, for a particular reason, but it is easier to go after and say, you know what, who are my inactive clients? You get so busy in the day-to-day, -day, you get so busy chasing new clients that you ignore your inactive clients or you ignore your current clients that then become your inactive clients. <laughs> so talking about, um Talking about going after new clients, talking about maybe generating leads, one of the things that we, we all do this is we do not make ourselves a hot list. We don't make a list of targeted leads. We all, we all know what clients we would like to have. We've all been at a networking event and met someone and said, oh, I would love to have them as a client. We've all been driving down the street and seen a yeah, business, like seen it in the shopping center and say, man, I would love them to be my client. I should stop in there one day. But that's all random. That's all just kind of willy-nilly off the cuff. You need to sit down and make yourself a list of who are the top 100, top 50, top 25 leads, the top 25 targets that you want and go after them. Set your sights on them and go after them. Until you have that list, you're just going to be bouncing all over the place. Make yourself a list, make a plan so to reach out to them, and then work that plan. Follow up with phone calls, email, direct mail, flyers, postcards, whatever you got to do. But you now know that I'm going to target and I'm going to focus on these 25 leads. And until those 25 leads become clients, or they tell you, stop calling, please, then you don't move on. Once those 25 are done, we make ourselves another list of 25, and we go after those. And we just keep doing that over and over and over. I started doing this as I'm driving from client to client. I keep seeing that same big business that I know I can help with their marketing, that same business that I know orders a lot of what I'm selling. And I've just started jotting it down. And at the end of the day, I have nothing to lose. I call the company, I speak to the gatekeeper, and somehow you're just able to penetrate. You're able to eventually, after you call a lot, you build a rapport with the gatekeeper. You say, you know, I, I keep trying to reach John, but he's not in. I would love to just send him an email. I'm not gonna bombard him with 100 emails. I just want to have an opportunity to send him one to make him that great offer. But the key here, is you have to be consistent, as Robert said, you have to keep going after them, and eventually that gatekeeper, she's not gonna care, she's gonna give you his email, because it's definitely worked for me on more than one occasion. Now with that said, before we move on to number four, when I said, you don't stop until they tell you stop calling me. Now, 
we're going to stop calling. That doesn't mean we're going to stop marketing right. to them. They're going to stay in our email list. They're going to stay in our mailing list. And we're going to do what's known as a drip campaign. We're going to put them in a sequence where they're going to keep getting email from us every single week, whether it be a blog post, uh, our newsletter. If you send out a sales letter, if you send out a postcard, if you send out anything, email, anything in the mail, you're going to send it to them. You're going to keep them on that list. We're simply just going to stop calling them, but we're going to keep them there in our cycle, in our leads, in our drip system. And that brings us to our next uh, tip, and that is change your message. A lot of times as entrepreneurs, we get stuck on our message. We think that we have the best message in the world, and sometimes we're not I open, saw that, by the sometimes way. We're I not saw open that. to changing our message and saying, okay, I know I cr I'm a genius, I created this wonderful, this wonderful message, but you know what? The phone's not ringing like I know it can. Or you know what? I'm not getting a response to my direct mail campaign. So you have to stop, be objective, and say, all right, let me look at my message, let me look at my marketing, and maybe by tweaking it a little, we can do that. And that's actually where Robert, even though I don't like to admit that he is very bright and brilliant, but that's where he comes in. He's a great copywriter. And that is one of the things most people hate doing, but he loves doing. I know, he's a weirdo. He loves this type of stuff. But by changing the message, you can definitely get a bigger bang for your buck, and you'll start to see changes immediately. But again, you have to be open to this. Yes, you have to be aware of what's going on in your market, so then you can change the message to tweak that. So we all went through the recession. We all felt what the pain of the economy completely tanking. So one of the ways that we used to position ourselves was on service and quality. The way we differentiated ourselves from a lot of other promotional product companies was not so much on the product or the low price point of the product like some of these big discount companies and, and, and websites do. We focused on, hey, we're going to give you great quality service, we're going to give you a great quality product, and we're going to give you a 10-year guarantee to go with it. What we figured out was when the economy tanked, people were not so focused on quality and service anymore. People were focused on price. Now, we knew we had to change our message, but we didn't want to become the... the, the Joe Cheapo. Joe Pens Cheapo. Right, right, right. We didn't want to put... We didn't want to be Joe Cheapo. Great. That's a great... That's a great one, by the way. I love that. Joe Cheapo. So we didn't want to be Joe Cheapo. So we're like, okay, how do we change our message? So we changed our message to... We understand the economy's tanking. We understand you're cutting back. But now is not the time to cut back on your marketing. You need to do more marketing than ever before. And promotional products are one of the most low-cost, most effective ways to do your marketing. Lowest cost per impression. High, high, high brand impressions right you can't do that with radio you can't do that with television you can't afford to run 30 spots a day on radio 30 spots a day but with promotional products we can still make a big impact on a low with a low budget so that became our message our message became about marketing using the power of promotional products and that's kind of stuck through now we're in 2016 economies turned around and we're still marketing that message now it's yes, not it so much sense. about it makes sense absolutely it's not so much about Promotional items are a great low-cost way to market yourself. Now it's about promotional products are a great way to market yourself to create a return on your investment. We even wrote a book about it, Outrageous Promotions and Outrageously Effective. Yay. So we tweaked our message, and it's and it's a message we've kept, we've evolved. The message has evolved to the point where we wrote a book basically around that entire message. I always The easiest way to understand this, I always tell my clients, you want to invest in a pen versus... Uh, let's say a flyer. A flyer is going to get looked at one time or even a nice beautiful ad in your trade publication. It's going to get looked at one time. They're going to close it. They're going to throw it away. I mean, think about it. When was the last time someone thanked you for your flyer or thanked you for placing a message uh, or something in a magazine? Yeah, but give Never. them a mug with your logo on it. Give them a nice uh, leather pad folio with your logo on it and they're going to thank you for Absolutely. it, right? Absolutely. And right. they're thanking you for you, for your advertisement, basically. Um, the number of times that someone uses a pen in a day, hundreds of times, again, your message is there time after time. When the, when the time does come for them to need you or need your products and services, guess who they're going to call? You're going to be top of mind. Top of mind. So top of mind is a great lead into number five, which is plan out monthly marketing campaigns. There's nothing more powerful than staying in touch in front visible to your customers month in and month out. As small business owners, we get caught up in the whirlwind of running our business, and we might think, oh, Mother's Day is coming around, let's do a Mother's Day promotion, or 
Um, oh, let's do a big 4th of July barbecue. Invite all our clients to come out to, to our business. We'll do a little meet and greet, put on a barbecue for 4th of July. That's all great, but it's not consistent. It's not consistent. I would almost prefer you don't do the 4th of July barbecue and that five $600 you're going to spend on hamburgers and hot dogs and sodas and everything you were going to do to have a customer appreciation picnic. Take that same money and plan out monthly marketing campaigns. Even if it's a simple direct mail piece, even if it's a simple postcard, January, you, you start off the new year. February, hey, it's Valentine's. We love our clients. We want to make you this special offer. St. Patrick's Day is March. Hey, the luck of the Irish, we got a lucky offer for your client. I mean, you, there's so much that can be done with it. There's a lot of great ideas in the book. And um, we also put together a uh, marketing calendar. So this, so easy. this thing is so like a no-brainer, right? This thing has three thousands of ideas that you can tie into. And fun things, not even not just like monthly. It's a chocolate lover's day, or uh, it'll be kiss your boss day. <laughs> ah, who kissed who though? Who's the boss, right? <laughs> all right, so there's all kinds of, of, of days. There's days, there's weeks of, there's the months of, there's days in history. You know, the first, the, the day that we uh, landed the rover on Mars, the first day that they invented the kaleidoscope. There's just so many cool things that you can tie into. The hard part is figuring it all out, and we've already fixed that for you. Right. We've come up with this, this binder is about this thick, and it's just day after day after day, week after week, month after month of all these great campaigns that you can tie your message in and put your marketing out there month after month after month. Yes. Right. What's number six? Number six is develop a powerful USP, a unique selling position. As Robert mentioned, we had to tweak ours. We went from kind of a boutique uh, service, white glove service, to marketing and power, the power of promotional products. So we had to tweak our USP. Our unique selling uh, position was not being the cheapest in town. It was using and harnessing the power of promotional products into your marketing. When times got tough, people couldn't afford the fancy uh, billboards or they couldn't afford uh, the very high-end promotional products, but you had to continue to market and brand yourself with a low-cost pen that was still serving your message. So sometimes you have to think, okay, what is my unique selling position? You may not even know, you may not have even thought of it because as entrepreneurs, we get busy running our business and we don't take the time to put thought into our marketing campaigns or put thought into running the, the things that are gonna actually make us grow towards our goals. A, a USP, developing a good USP can catapult a business, right? I will be the first one to admit that I, 16 years later, have still not fully developed a USP that I feel is a powerful, a powerful message, right? But I'm working on it and I keep tweaking it. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of examples because your USP is not to be confused with the tagline, okay? Right. So uh, a shipping company can have a tagline that says, bringing the world to your door. That's not a USP, folks, that's a tagline. A USP is not your elevator pitch. A USP is not a 20 second intro of what you do, all right? I'm gonna give you a couple of examples of USPs that you're gonna recognize right away and they catapulted these companies to the billion dollar businesses that they are today. And they oh, didn't I start know, as billion dollar businesses. Say. They didn't start as billion dollar businesses. Slow your roll, ladies, slow your roll, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the most recognizable, again, your USP should say exactly what you do. It should tell your client, your buyer, your member, your prospect, your patient, your lead, whoever it is, it should tell them exactly what you do. So the most famous USP that you over- Deliver to your door 30 minutes or less, right? That's what you were gonna say? That's not exactly it it's fresh <laughs> hot pizza delivered in 30 minutes or less close enough or it's free right they don't do the it's free anymore because of insurance reasons um, but that usp took dominoes from two brothers with a couple little stores to a multi-billion dollar multinational franchise from that simple usp I'll give you another USP that you'll definitely recognize when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. Who's that? Brown. UPS? FedEx? One of the big shipping companies. <laughs> One of, okay, so you kind of ruined my whole example of how powerful and recognizable the USP is, but we're gonna let it slide because you are blonde, so we're gonna we're just let that slide. I hope all the blondes out there don't get mad at me. I'm just a joke, it's just a joke. 
All right. So develop a powerful USP. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do another segment. I can almost do an entire workshop yes. on developing USPs. That's a great idea because and I think that's one of the things that entrepreneurs struggle with. I mean, we're in this industry. You're a marketing guru. We've written a book and we still struggle with our USP. Right. Yeah, yeah. I so really think, I think that definitely. maybe uh, putting together a USP workshop or a USP boot camp, something like that. Might be uh, might be of interest. I know it interests me. I would love to do it. Who knows? Uh, we may even finally discover right. the perfect USP for ourselves. Exactly. So if this sounds interesting <laughs> to you, if you'd like if you'd like us to do a USP workshop or a USP bootcamp, let us know. Put comments. Send us an email. Give us a phone call. Please. Let us know, and we'll and we'll definitely um, look into developing a USP workshop. All right. Number seven. What do we got there? Host special events. Now, this is something that you can tie into things that are current. For instance, uh, the earthquake in Ecuador. You might be able to tie in a toy drive for something like that, and it's a great cause. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I see. I it's see. Great, I, I, I got to tell you. self serving. No, no, yeah. I got to tell you that when you first heard the earthquake, I'm sitting here going, how in the hell are we tying <laughs> in an event to an earthquake? <laughs> Sounds, uh, but I see where you're going with it. Yes, obviously. Tying in an event, tying in an event to a nonprofit or to a worthy cause is 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 always going to give you more recognition. You could get more media attention. And we're in a, we're in a day and age where we all want to be socially conscious, right? We all want to do our part to make the world a better place. It's not all about money, 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 money. Matter of fact, we just put up a new frame out in, in the hallway there that says driven by, and the word money is crossed off. And it says purpose. It's driven by purpose. That, that's we're really actually much in doing a little contest on Facebook trying to see. We have several of these frames, and we're trying to see um, which one is the most popular. So we'll put that up. And if you like that one, let us know. How about we take? How about we take the most popular one, turn into a T-shirt? Ooh, I like that. How about idea. we take that? We take your votes. Most popular one, we turn into a T-shirt. And if it's one you voted for, we're gonna send you a free T-shirt. I love that. If you voted for a different one, you can buy the T-shirt. But if you voted for the one that becomes a t-shirt, we're going to send you a free t-shirt. Would this be an example of a special event? Maybe? Trying to tie something in like that? Or... I don't know. I, don't know. I, I was thinking when I wrote this, I was thinking more of a customer appreciation event, meet and greet events. Um... Like the ones we've done in the holidays where we just invite all our clients to have a drink on us. Right, right, right. Not literally on us, meaning that we pay. I don't want you people getting all crazy another, out there. That's right? another segment. So, yeah, something like that, right? We we used to do a uh, PTA appreciation. Um, the screen printing side of our of our business does a lot of t-shirts for schools. So we used to do, uh, every year at the end of the school year, we used to do a uh, PTA appreciation luncheon. Yes. And we would invite the, uh, the PTAs. Moms, the moms and, that work so hard, we appreciate you. We appreciate your business because we all know how hard moms work. And these moms in the PTSA, sometimes they had full-time jobs. Um, and even if they didn't, I'll tell you that this was a full-time job. So we would have a nice lunch. We would pamper them. We would give them a little gift. We would do gift sets. And this was something that was just blow them away. Nobody does anything nice. A lot of people don't do anything nice for their customers, if you think about it. So any small gesture that you do, going back to what Rob said about the monthly tie-ins, the Valentine's Day is one of my favorite because when we send out that heart-shaped stress reliever to our clients saying, we love having clients like you, my phone rings off Oof. the hook. Right, keep going. It rings off the hook. I mean, the clients love it. And you think a stress reliever, you're talking a dollar item and then maybe, I don't know, less than a dollar to mail. And the response that you get and the the level of appreciation is just second to none. It just solidifies your relationship with your clients. It shows them that you think about them, and it shows them that you're you're a savvy marketer. Go, oh, I'm back. Yeah. Right. So I took an opportunity yes. to walk away to show you some of the things that Chrissy's talking about. Right. So going back to the special event, if you have not thanked your customers or done anything to make your customers feel special in the last six months, year. Forget about a special event. I need you to do something tomorrow. Yes. I mean, if it's send them an email, go buy a box of chocolates and sh send it to them. Do You need to do something. Absolutely. I mean, I think at the end of the day, if you're listening to me right now and you haven't thanked your customers or made them feel special, you're probably very aware of that. And you probably realize, oh my goodness. Don't keep putting it off. Don't put it off, right? No. So what did I go get? Talking about making your customers feel special. Talking about monthly, monthly marketing, right? This is one we did during Valentine's. We sent this out with a picture of Lucy from I Love Lucy. 
with a message saying we love our clients more than Ricky love Lucy. This I is fun. I still walk into my client's office, National Auto Lenders. Yeah. She still has that right up on her wall. Of and course. It, just, it makes me smile every time because sure. not only was it very savvy and witty to send out the message like that, but they actually keep it. Every time she sees that, I mean, do you not think that she thinks of our company and our business? Of course she does. And when somebody else walks in her office and says, oh my God, that Lucy poster is so cute. Oh, my, my my supplier, my vendor sent that to me. Yeah, we also had another one of these with uh, that scene uh, from The Godfather where Don Corleone is sitting in the chair and uh, Michael is right, right above him with his hand on his shoulder. And we sent that out uh, to all of our inactive customers and we made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Yeah. Right? So you walk into their offices, especially the guys, and you'll see The Godfather uh, 8.5 by 11 up on their wall. Uh, here's another one we did. This is real easy to do. That was St. Patrick's Day. This is for St. Patrick's Day, the luck of the Irish. This is the uh, great cash grab, right? So they scratch off the little things, and if you get... Uh, Let me read this. If you, get one, cool. if you get one more. cash grab, you get 40 bucks off. Two cash grabs, $50 off, and three... $60 off. This reminds me of, of something funny though. Our son okay, so will let's, scratch you these off. You tell that story. I'm going to scratch it off and see what and, we got. And uh, he'll say, uh, Dad, uh, you owe me $60. Or can I buy $60 worth of promotional products from you? So these are just fun. And the clients love to do these. All right. So in this one, we got two cash grabs, which means a client 50. would get 50 bucks off their next order. And we do this every year during St. Patrick's Day. We do it. I admit, I slipped, I fell behind, and I didn't get it out in March in case you're one of our clients and you're watching this and you're going, I didn't get mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. We did drop the ball. I did drop the ball this March and we didn't do it. But for the most part, we do this every single year. And this is an easy, cheap, low cost, powerful, impactful, kick ass marketing idea. Well, there you have it. Seven ways to make changes in your business, seven easy fixes that you're able to do. Right now, the minute this segment ends, I want you to look at your notes, if, assuming you took notes, um, or I want you to think, okay, this one stood out on me, and I want you to take action. Do it now. What do you have to lose? Nothing. Nothing. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Nothing. So go out there and kick some ass.